are currently looking for a GM and a coach, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it looks like the GM position for sure will be, uh, Terry, I call him Fortnite, but his name is really Fontenot. Um, it's just, for some reason, his last name reminds me of Fortnite. Um, so he is the Saints, he's a Saints front office executive. I think he's pro scouting. Yeah, I think I think he does pro scouting. I think he's a, a pro scout. Uh, I, I literally don't know anything about the GM search. Uh, I've just been seeing like little news clips here and there. So this one's all no, you no, know. It, 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 he, he's definitely with them. He is the uh, vice president, assistant manager of pro personnel. Okay. Um, so he obviously has good experience. Look, we hate the Saints. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, hate- a, it's a Falcon shirt. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. Oh, that's an old school Falcon shirt too. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. Yeah, keep. Yeah, now take off the other the other shirt, man. Keep yeah. put that one on. But this yeah, is my strip for, strip for the ladies. This. This is my uh, professional. No, man, I'm not Magic Mike. I'm putting it up. Okay, <laughs> continue about Fontana. Uh, or or uh, what's it called? Uh, what is, what does uh, Kevin Hart call himself? His rap name? Uh, uh, chocolate drop. Chocolate <laughs> dropper. <laughs> So, so yeah, he's the he he's like I said, he's the assistant general, assistant man assistant general manager of uh, pro personnel. Okay. Look, we hate we hate the Saints, and also it's kind of like you're like, damn, we're gonna give them. So one of the good things about this, like, they're like we're gonna force people to look at people of color. Honestly, because of the way the NFL is drawn up, right. Honestly, when you say people of color on in football, it's mostly black, uh, black, black personnel, right? Because mm-hmm. that's who's the majority of the players, right? Yeah. So it makes sense, but it's people of color. Um, and and one of the things that they they just have, I think that it was doing the new CBA, um, when they passed the new CBA, which is if a if a team promotes helps to build up and promote and gets a, a black personnel promoted to an executive position, they get two third round compensatory, compensatory picks one year and then another year. So, so mm-hmm. if, if, which it looks like it is, so Terry Fontenot is going to become the general manager most likely. It was between him and Brad Holmes, Brad Holmes being with the Rams. Brad Holmes was just is it Brad Holmes. He was just announced as the GM for the Lions. Okay. For the I'll be I'll be Rams. putting pictures up when we're uploading oh. this, so people know who we're talking about. Yeah. So so he is now the general manager for Detroit. Okay. Right. Um, and then he was one of the people that were people were like you know it could be us, it could be you know him or us, whatever. And then. Someone argued, well, you know, now I feel like we're getting Terry Fontenay because of, you know, they got they got an other guy that probably could have been our guy, the 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 Detroit Lions. And I'm like, no, I kind of the from what you read, it kind of feels like the GM position, they were comfortable with either one of them. Mm-hmm. And then even though now they're saying he's the favorite to be the Falcon, but I feel like honestly, yeah, cap space being aside. I would think the Falcons would be a much more attractive landing uh, spot than the Lions. Why is that? I'm going to go, honestly, just based off of a young defensive core. Uh-huh. Um, and AJ, AJ Terrell is in talks for, like, you know, defensive rookie of the year. You probably won't get it because of the team's record. The but... team's record, yeah. yeah. But a young defensive core. And then the offense. Look, if you know football and these guys do know football, they would be excited about. They know that Matt Ryan and Julio Jones are starting to do, their careers are about to dwindle. They're about to be at the end, and they're well aware of the cap space that I can't move on from this guy unless I get like whatever I can get from. You know what I mean? Like get like a good amount of uh, get. A, you're not gonna trade Julio Jones or Matt Ryan for without at least getting one first round pick. Mm-hmm. I don't know why people seem to think that. They're gonna sell Matt Ryan for four pounds for four for four rounds, or the fourth round. I'm like, no, it's not. You're gonna. You're, there's no way you're gonna depart from a guy that you're about to pay twenty something million dollars. That two guys that take up what, like twenty five percent of the offensive cap. 
or if not the overall cap space, you're not going to, you're not going to trade them for uh, nickels on the dime. You know, you're so a really good and a guy like Terry Fortney, he's used to having a quarterback to build around. Mm. He did it with Drew Brees, you know, so, or he helped do it with Drew Brees. Right. Yeah. And he's been steadily climbing in the executive position for quite a couple of years. So I honestly think the Falcons wanted him from the get-go, but it was just one of those things. They just wait to the process. And also they can't hire him until he's out of the um, playoffs. Which now this, that I think about it, if the Sunday. guy was hired from the Rams, he's not out of the playoffs. Uh, who was? Uh, the, the, the guy, the Rams were still in the playoffs, right? Yeah, they are. They're playing against um, Green Bay. Yeah, so the Detroit Lions just got um, – who the hell did they get? Yeah, they, the Rams the, – from the Rams, Brad Holmes. I wonder if the GM for executive positions is not the same as coaches. Might, that might be the case, no? Yeah, I, I mean, mean it's possible because, I mean, they're not really doing anything at this point of the season. A lot of their work is um, off-season and maybe making decisions on, like – you know, so maybe with, I think coaches. what the Falcons do, they're just like, you know what, we're going to take our time getting the right guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think about um, the fact that the Jags hired Urban Meyer? Um, people are saying, oh, Urban Meyer came from Ohio State. Uh, that means he's going with Fields for the number one pick. What do you think? First of all, I don't think that we should draft a quarterback with that high of draft pick. I really want us to get um, last name Sewell, uh, mm. Samoan dude. The Pinay, Pinay yeah, Sewell. Yeah, thank you. Pinay. Yeah, Sewell. Say the name again. Pinay Sewell or Sewell, Sewell Pinay? Pinay? One of those two. Yeah. <laughs> either way. Either, he's yeah, either saying yeah. it like uh, last name first and first name last. Well, you know, in, in Japan, um, the family name comes first. Right, so I'll okay, be... there you go. So he's saying a, you're either saying a Japanese style or American style, right. but um, it's right I want to get him just because those that's one of those pick. You get that guy at such a high draft pick, he stays with you for ten years. Yeah. You know, you have a steady position for ten years, and then also, um, I just feel like what ends up happening is instantly as soon as Matt Ryan, for some reason Matt Ryan is a polarizing quarterback for a lot of people. Um. There's a smirk on your face. Please explain. No, I mean, I, I agree. He is a polarizing quarterback. Okay. I mean, I, I see it all the time. Um, not even, not just the Facebook group that we're a part of, the Atlanta Bird Gang, but also um, my friends. Like, they're half and half. Like, Matt Ryan sucks. Matt Ryan is good. Yeah, and, so, and, and yeah. a lot of times it's kind of like, you know, I was like, I was like, the defense allows 32 points. Damn it, Matt Ryan. You know, it's just like, like, you're kind of targeting the wrong person, but I guess because it's the quarterback, you have to look at him first, right? Um, but honestly, if I think the thing would happen is if Justin Fields gets drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars, it actually removes a lot of what? What did I say? That's not going to happen. I mean, I, I know that was the initial question I asked, but I was asking <laughs> facetious. I was asking facetiously. That's not going to happen. So you're waiting for me to give you the right answer, right? Yeah, say no. <laughs> no, no, why, I mean, okay, but, but, but sorry, go on. You said if it gets drafted by the Jaguars. If, honestly, look, if Trevor Lawrence and Justin Field are out of the, at, out of the, have already been picked by the time it gets to the Falcons, that actually alleviates a lot of pressure mm. from them. Because I don't think you, I don't think they would draft that Zach. Guy. I really don't. I think that they would be like, you know what? These are the two best quarterbacks. We can wait till later rounds because now the UGA quarterback has just um, announced that he's, uh, what's it called? Um, yeah. No, Alabama. 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 Thank you. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mike Alabama. Jones. UGA yeah. wasn't in the. The UGA corner. guy was the. Uh, is it Stidham? Not Stidham. Um, Bennett. Seth and Bennett. Or, like, did, they the, went... did UGA even make it to the playoffs? Dude, there's only four teams in the playoffs. Okay, I'm just saying. It's a crappy. Uh, okay. It's a crappy system. It needs to be like eight teams. Um, I agree with you on that one. Yeah. Um, but, anyways, he just announced that he's gonna go, and then they're saying he comes in a later round. So, and like, all right, yeah, you might. I, get I it. think second round. I think the Patriots get him. Think so. Mm -hmm. Some somehow, some way, they'll get him. Um, yeah, I. Uh, so the Zach Wilson thing, I was hoping that if the Falcons get a quarterback, it would be 
Um, yeah, I, I've been I've been back and forth on this for a long time. I actually would, was hoping that if Fields drops to the Falcons, that the Falcons do get him, right? And I've and I've I've changed my mind several times on that. And the reason being that Zach Wilson, um, while he shows like really good pocket presence and like being able to throw into tight spots, so does Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan can do those things. Um, I saw this one, this highlight reel of Calvin Ridley because I think he had like the most receptions um, of our team this year, which, mm. you yeah, know, not hard. Um, the, the first throw was Matt Ryan, um, like right at, it was like a place that no one else but Ridley could get it. It was right at the, at the edge of the line. It was such a good throw. And I was the like- The only people who don't like Matt Ryan and think Matt Ryan is a, court, is a bad quarterback are fans who don't know who are all, all, all up in their feelings about the about right, him. Right. You listen to the people in the booth, they talk about how great he is. Yeah. You listen, to, if you hear other coaches talk about him, they talk how great he is. Matt Ryan, to, to people who, who are in football, he is not a bad quarterback to me. Yeah. Honestly, I think more people need to have NFL red zone or, I don't know, just play fantasy football and watch other teams because... Um, we can talk about, you know, yes, he gets all these numbers and it could be yards after the catch and all that stuff. That's fine. But I'm, I'm talking about when you give a quarterback time and you say, hey, run this route, put it in this position. I think Matt Ryan is still one of the more accurate quarterbacks in the league. Um, there's a lot that he doesn't do that I wish he would do, like a Josh Allen, who you know that when things break down, he can take it. By himself, he can run it yeah. through. You know, um, that's he, that's uh, that's he one didn't of the come things. From that time, you know, he didn't come. From yeah, he's Brooklyn. exactly. He's not from that's that era. Him. That's that's yeah. why I kind of like Fields over Wilson. Um, I haven't really seen tape on Wilson that suggests that he um, he's mobile, um, but we know Fields can run if he needs to. Um, Fields made some really good throws in that game against Clemson. Um, Against Alabama, he was just swarmed. There was nothing he could do. Against against Clemson, he made some pretty good throws. Now a lot of it was just you know straight up fly routes, and you know the Clemson defenders got burnt. But to make the the throw is still impressive. Yeah. Um, I, I think if you build up on fields, um, thrown into um, proper like coverage, like 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 throwing into the routes and all that stuff. Couple that with his speed, I think Fields can be like the next Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, you know, that actually wins games, you know. So, <laughs> so you know, I, 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 I like Fields. I've, I've thought about it. I've been on and off on Fields, but I, I like Fields, but I don't think we're going to get him. I don't think it's going to drop to the Falcons. I think it yeah, probably will be the guy you're talking about, the soul guy. You think so? Yeah. Uh. I'm like, if we're gonna go for a QB, if we get Trevor, which isn't gonna happen. There's no way. We're not, not getting either. Trevor Lawrence. That dude is gonna be number one. Overall, like, no, yeah. there's no, there's no doubt. Like, yeah. he's already counting. He's already counting his money. Um, <laughs> but um, what I was gonna say about the 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 thing is, when you draft a quarterback so high, okay, yeah, I understand. You need to put pressure on Matt Ryan, right? But what ends up happening is, you end up having shitty games. Bad offensive line at one point that causes, like, uh, the QB to just have a bad game, right? Even though when Matt Ryan has a bad game, he's still throwing a lot of – he's still throwing a lot of successful passes, right? Yeah. Um, what ends up happening is as soon as the first sign of trouble is people are going to want Matt Ryan off the field, put in a new guy, now you have a quarterback controversy. But this is the thing I don't like. I don't like it. Look what happened with Sam Darnold, with Mitchell Trubisky – with Josh Rosen, you throw these guys into these things. Not all of them can be like Matt Ryan, who were successful, you know, off the bat, like the first year. Mm. There's a there's a lack of development for, for quarterbacks now, the way they used to be back in the day. One of the reasons Aaron Rodgers is the is as great as he is is because he, he stood behind Brett Favre for three years. Yeah. You know? And, and it's just like not all of them can be like Peyton Manning, who, you know, uh, just jump in, just go in right away and become uh, the starting quarterback, right? Yeah, but get it's drafted just, in the first all... round and 
be successful as a starting quarterback. Yeah, yeah. it's just like, no, some of them do require development. And the problem that happens is it's such a win now league that you just automatically get thrown into to it. And this is the thing, though. Uh, also, one of the biggest things to me is when you draft a QB, that's pretty much to me going to be saying they're going to blow up the whole damn thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Build around and that then, guy. Yeah. And then once once they blow up the whole damn thing, it's just like that gives us three two years of of being able to be mediocre and not, you know what I mean? I honestly think, do you think if you have the 2016 offensive line? No, nah, I can't say that. Cause I'd say if you have the 2016 offensive line and Justin Fields does as great as he could, is as great as people think he will be, he can win the Super Bowl <laughs> behind I, that offensive line. I, I think, and I actually, now I'm really hoping for this. There's a lot of reports of people saying that Justin Fields would benefit a lot from playing one more year at Ohio State, because he's only a junior. Um, if he does that, I think that's best case scenario for the Falcons, if they're able to you draft high enough to get Fields, because at least you get Fields in the 2022 draft, and he's only sitting behind Ryan for maybe a year or so, because uh, Ryan's contract is only two more years, right? Uh, he has three more years, but I'm pretty sure the cap hit is really not that bad at the third year for them to let him go after that. Right. So, um, I mean, if Matt Ryan is still having a poor run of it, then you draft Fields. I honestly don't think he will. Honestly, you put the right – if, which leads into the other thing, which is the possibility. Most likely it looks like Arthur Smith is going to be the head coach. He's the offensive coordinator for the D- Tennessee Titans. Most likely okay. he's going to be the offensive coordinator for that. And The head coach. The head coach, I'm sorry. And I honestly said, I honestly feel that if Arthur Smith becomes the head coach, that will lead to a resurgence of Matt Ryan's career, especially if they draft. I don't even think you have to draft a, a, a good running back. Like honestly, Nikki I think Harris. you have a good running back core. A running back by mm, No, I think if like it's Hill? a running back by committee, to me, once you took out uh, Gurley. People like Brian Hill, they did they did good. I mean, we've seen Hill try to fill in the space for Freeman the previous season. And Hill would have, like, good games. And then sometimes he would just be, like, invisible completely. That's because he was concussed. <laughs> and then I mean, you got, that kind uh, of causes you to be invisible when you're on injured reserves. I guess. I honestly, the right offensive coordinator can work with any real running back. Honestly, he really can. I mean, yeah, getting a getting a, a Devontae Freeman in his peak is amazing. Uh, getting a Tim what's Coleman. his name from the Tennessee Titans is a is a freak of nature. Henry. Henry, yeah, he's a freak of nature. He really is. But um, I don't. I mean, even if you do draft a running back, a good running back in the second round, right? Because I think they they keep putting Najee Harris. Is he? Najee but Harris. He's a first rounder, right? Probably. He's really good, uh, the Alabama kid. But actually, a lot of people have been saying second round. But um, I think it's going to go in the first round. Yeah, I think it just depends on need on uh, who comes out first. What, what's the Falcons trade with uh, Bengals to get Giovanni Bernard or something stupid like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, Dimitrov is gone. Dimitrov was the one okay. that would do those kind of double That would do something like that, yeah. Yeah, I, um, I, don't, I don't think... Yeah. One one more thing I want to talk about with regards to this draft uh, before we move on to the predictions and all that stuff. Um, I saw reports of um, anonymous Dolphins players saying that they don't believe Tua is the quarterback of the future, um, which you know matters because the Dolphins have the number three pick from the Texans. Um, if they don't think Tua is the quarterback of the future. Like, like if, if we're to believe that the GM would believe these guys would go for, for that, do you think that they could actually draft another quarterback a year after drafting Tua? Well, the Arizona Cardinals did it. Yeah, but... So it's possible, but, Rosen but I know, like Murray nuts. is like one of those amazing quarterbacks, yada, yada, yada. No, no, um, but, but Rosen was like really bad. Oh, Rosen was also really bad because he also was part of a crap team. True. Because look, Mur- look how long it took for Murray to finally start winning. And then did they even did they still have a winning season? Were they eight and eight? They did. They did. So, or at least um No, they were 500. they were at eight and eight or less because uh the Chicago Bears got into the playoffs at eight and eight. 
Oh, okay. So. No, I, no, I mean, wasn't it a situation where um, if they beat the Rams, they would have been in? Yeah, but they didn't. And I think they were at, um, I could even, t- I'll tell you right now in a second. But anyways, even, even it's taking, it's still taking uh, Murray a, a, a while to, they were eight and eight. So it's taking mm-hmm. Murray a while to, for him to be able to get to where they think it's that he should season. be. Yeah, mm-hmm. because it's just like, you don't, the, I feel, I honestly feel bad for Josh Rose. I really do. He's just put in two back to back, put in two different situations where Miami has been an atrocious team for a long time. You know, they got into the playoffs one time, but they were even then they were still bad because they, they got like, I think the um, the quarterback that they had at that time got massacred, or was it the no? It was the Raiders went against them, and that quarterback got massacred. It was the one that had to start. Um, he had to start his very first starting game in the NFL was the was it was a playoff game. Um, oh wow! Yeah, so I forget I forget his name, but he he. Uh, but anyways, Miami's been bad for a long time, you know. Um, so Josh Rosen was put in a bad situation with them. He was put in a bad situation with um, with the Arizona Cardinals because also it was like, for some reason, black coaches seem to be a transitional coach for a lot of teams. Like because it was what's his name for only one year, and then like they gave up on him. You know, which brings me back to the whole the whole coach search. Like I said last week, is I'm like, why does it seem like some coaches are white and do media don't do really much, and they're, they're getting looked at like people want the, the um. Joe the guy Brady, that was at LSU. What was it? Joe Brady, yes. People want Joe Brady to come to the Falcons. And I'm like, and every single person that does that, I ask, why? Yeah. Yeah, I, I asked you that too. I was like, I, what has he done with the Carolina Panthers? Like, but, is it based off of what he did at LSU that you guys want him so bad? Like, I don't get it. Yeah, I just, I don't get it either. So it's just like, and then he had, what's his name to work with back then? What's his name? Joe um, Burr. So, just, no. I'm just like no. Um. Yeah. Anyway. Um. Okay. So you don't think they will draft a quarterback? Is that what you're saying? Miami. Yeah. No, I feel that I think they're gonna grab my guy because look, they can easily be like, all right, you don't think Tua is the one, but maybe it's because Tua doesn't have a great line. Again, one of those guys you just plug in. He go. He's. But if they grab your guy, then. So that means, um, Lawrence is gone. Maybe Fields or maybe Wilson's gone, and then your guy's gone. Would you take Wilson if it drops to the Falcons? Would you take Fields if it drops to the Falcons, or skip? I'll take Fields just so y'all can shut the hell up. Okay. And let's just go ahead and get him. And then we'll find out for sure. And then what's going to end up happening is Matt Ryan will probably get traded to the San Francisco 49ers for a first rounder and and a couple of players from the San Francisco 49ers, and then Matt Ryan goes to win a Super Bowl ring with Kyle Shanahan. And then we hate Kyle Shanahan even more. Honestly, I I would – I hate to say it. I really do hate to say it, but I would love for Matt Ryan to go I would somewhere. love it just so people can shut the hell up about exactly. Matt Ryan being a bad quarterback. Just because of all the <laughs> crap that he gets from Atlanta fans, I would love for Matt Ryan to go over to Well, Super Bowl. you know what? What you said – um, a while ago about wouldn't it be uh, when we were talking about Messi's legacy and we mentioned Tom Brady and it'd be crazy if Tom Brady were to make it to the Super Bowl without Bivuk. He's one game away from being at the NFC Championship. And and I want them to win. I want them to beat uh, the Saints. I do too. 